नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स दिस इज मंदार भानुशे फ्रॉम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिस्टेंस एंड ओपन लर्निंग यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मुंबई एंड आई एम श्योर दैट ऑल ऑफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड टू नो वॉट इज दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इन दिस लेक्चर सो जस्ट टू कनेक्ट विद द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैड गिवेन यू वन एक्टिविटी रिगार्डिंग फाइंडिंग आउट विच आर द टू कंपनीज हु डिसाइडेड टू स्प्रेड द शेयर इन दी मंथ ऑफ ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी टू वी हैव सीन सो मेनी कमेंट्स इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियो and i'm really happy to see that all of you are participating in these lectures also which are telecasted online on youtube channel so let me share with you which are the two companies which uh, actually did the splitting of their shares in the month of august 2022 first company is the high energy batteries limited and the second company is veriman global so high energy batteries uh, decided to split their stocks in the month of august on 10th of august 2022 and the splitting was uh, by dividing the face value of rupees 10 into 5 shares having a face value of rupees 2 whereas veriman global decided to split their stocks on 12th of august 2022 and they decided to split each of its shares having a face value of rupees 10 into shares having a face value of rupees 1 so this is how you see companies split their shares and increase their wealth also add some liquidity to their company coming back to this video lecture where as told to you in the previous video lecture that we are going to talk about mutual funds in this video lecture so so i hope you are prepared to learn about mutual funds many of you might have heard about mutual funds through some advertisements we have seen so many advertisements on different types of mutual funds where what we can only gather from the advertisement is a uh, one liner which is also said in such a fast pace that we are not able to actually receive what is the content about and the line goes mutual funds are subject to market risk and it gets over like that yeah but in this video lecture we are going to understand about mutual funds the type of funds how they how these funds actually help us the as an investor and of course this is a mathematical and statistical techniques paper so we also will be solving some problems related to that so what is a mutual fund in the previous unit uh, on shares where we discuss lot of uh, problems also related to shares we have studied how one can transact shares and now we shall study what is a mutual fund or what are mutual funds and how do they function an investor can invest money either directly in shares or that investor can invest his money through mutual funds mutual funds are managed by large financial services with a professional team of fund managers and research experts in fact mutual fund is a pool of money which is drawn from the investors and it is further invested into different portfolios like shares debentures securities and who do who does these things it is done by the fund managers and after this investment whatever the returns are received the profits which are received uh, in proportion to the investment they are passed back to the investors who invest in these mutual funds so if you can see this picture which is there on the left hand side of on the screen you will be able to understand the cycle of this investment in the mutual funds at a given time the total value is divided by the total number of units to get the value of a single unit at a given time this is called as nav net asset value of the fund so what is nav nav is nothing but if you want to put it as a formula so what is nav you can see on the screen nav is the net assets of the scheme divided by the total number of units outstanding also we can write the same thing in another way like nav is equal to total assets minus the liabilities divided by total number of units outstanding now there are mixed or hybrid funds which invest in both debt and equity the offer documents gives the guidelines the constraints under which these uh, fund managers would be operating so all details are shared with the investor when a investor decides to put his money in a particular mutual fund for example the fund managers may decide to do the investment in 80% equity or 100% equity also investment in money markets 
from 0% to 20% etc. In India, uh, mutual funds are governed by SEBI. SEBI is Securities and Exchange Board of India. Now, there are different companies which are called as fund houses. For example, you might have, you might have heard about SBI, Reliance, SGFC. So, these float different mutual funds. Each such fund is called as a scheme. And now you might have again realized the advertisements which come on different uh, media. For example, HDFC has a scheme called as HDFC Tax Saver. So, we have also heard about mid cap, small cap, large cap, uh, blue chip fund, and all different kinds of funds which we have heard about. So, today in this video lecture, we are going to summarize all these different things. Like for a share, IPO of a company's share, okay, just we have the initial public offer IPO. So, like IPO of a company's share, a mutual fund scheme starts by a new fund offer, NFO. So, what is an NFO? NFO means new fund offer. In shares, we call it as IPO. In the mutual fund scheme, we call it as NFO. Investors can invest by purchasing units of the mutual funds. Usually, a unit is of rupees 10. Now, what is the difference between a share and mutual fund? A share is the smallest unit of a company's capital. This we have seen in the first video lecture also. Whereas in the case of mutual funds, even a fraction of a unit can be purchased after the NFO is in the market. So, let us uh, try to study uh, the following example will make these uh, things more clear. So, let us understand this concept by an example. So, as you can see in this example in front of you, this we have taken from the study material itself. We will try to understand how do we calculate NAV of a mutual fund scheme. So, a mutual fund scheme shows the following on 1 1 2007. The total number of securities, equities, bonds is, say, for example, rupees 1500 crores. The cash is rupees 100 crores. The liabilities of the company is rupees 200 crores. And the total number of units outstanding is rupees 100 crores. So, how do you calculate the NAV? We just add the total value of the securities 1500 plus the cash which is 100 crores and we remove or subtract the liabilities 200 crores and we divide by the total number of units which are outstanding. And therefore, by this formula we get the NAV of this particular mutual fund scheme is rupees 14 per unit. So, this is how we calculate NAVs. The NAV of a mutual fund scheme is calculated and disclosed to the public for every working day. So, each day what is the NAV, current NAV of a particular mutual fund, fund scheme is disclosed to the public so that the public, the investors are aware of what is the change in the NAV of the fund which they have purchased. The NAV changes daily. Investors try to invest when the NAV is low and sell the units and get profits when the NAV is high. Most mutual fund schemes are not traded at stock market. Thus, the investor purchases as well as sells the unit to something which is called as AMC. What is AMC? AMC is Asset Management Company. Now, this sale is called as redemption, redemption of units. Different funds. So, like we did in the previous video lecture, we have an activity for you and what is the activity? You can see on the screen. So, the activity is to do a very simple search on internet and find out 10 different mutual funds, the mutual fund schemes which are being offered currently and along with that also write down the NAVs of those mutual fund schemes on the date when you are watching this video. So, everybody may not be watching the video on a particular date. So, it is a good thing that in the comments of this video, just write down. I have told 10, but you can select 2, 3, whatever is easy for you. Just write down in the comment some mutual fund schemes and their current NAV on the date on which you are putting the comment. So, pause the video for a moment, do some search and post in the comments some mutual fund schemes along with their current NAVs. Welcome back and now I am sure you have written in the comments the different types of mutual funds which you have found by doing a simple search along with their enemies. Let us proceed further and understand more about 
the mutual funds and the terminologies which are associated with mutual funds. Basically, mutual funds are of two types. One, closed-ended funds and another, open-ended funds. So, what are closed-ended mutual funds? These are offered with a fixed date of maturity and can be purchased from a mutual fund company during a specific period. The investor can get the amount after the expiry date of the fund and if an investor wants to exit before the maturity date, he can sell the units on the stock exchange at a discount or through a buyback option of the fund. And what are open-ended funds? These have no fixed date of maturity and the units can be sold or repurchased at any time. The number of units and its capital changes daily. That is, as we have understood, the NAV also changes daily. So, the number of units and its capital also changes daily. In addition to these two types of funds, there are two more things which we should understand. One is about the entry load, another is the exit load. So, what are these two types of loads? Some mutual fund schemes collect a charge when investors purchase or redeem their units. These are usually percentage of NAV. The charge levied while purchasing a unit is called as the entry load and the charge collected on the redemption is called as the exit load. Usually debt funds have no loads. When there are no charges while purchasing or selling of these units, these funds are called as no load funds. Okay. Mutual funds can be broadly categorized into two types. Dividend funds which offer a dividend and growth funds which do not offer a dividend. In mutual funds, dividend given has no direct relation to the profit earned. The mutual fund invests the money in different shares that may or may not give a dividend at different times and different rates. The fund manager may at any arbitrary point decide to give a part of units value back to the investors which we call as dividend. For a growth fund, the NAV does not come down due to dividends. It moves up or down purely on the basis of the gains or losses of the securities that the fund has invested into. For a growth fund, the gains per unit are purely from the difference between the redemption price and the purchase price. So, whatever was the price when it was purchased and whatever is the price when it is when the redemption is done, that difference is about the gains. The total gain is purely the capital gain. For a dividend fund, the total gain is the addition of the capital gain and the dividend. Let us look at the formula to understand it better. So, as you can see on the screen, the formula about the capital gain. So, how do we calculate the capital gain? It is the amount received after the redemption minus the purchase price or the amount invested. So, this is a very simple formula to find the capital gain. Then we have also problems where we have to find the rate of return. So, how do you calculate the rate of return? So, rate of return is the change in NAV plus the dividend, if there is any dividend, divided by NAV at the beginning of the period multiplied by 100. Okay, so please remember this is for a particular period only and annualized rate of return. So, that is the rate of return into 365 upon n, where what is this n? n is the number of days. Okay, we know in a year there are 365 days. So, and this is an annualized rate of return. So, depending upon the value of n, this we can calculate annualized rate of return by multiplying the rate of return with a fraction of the number of days, 365 divided by n. Now, let us understand some important terms and then we will stop here for this video lecture and the next video lecture will come up with problems related to all the things which we discussed in this video lecture. So, number one, assets. So, what do we call as assets? It refers to the market value of investment of mutual fund in government securities, bonds, etc its receivables, accrued income and other assets. So, that, that is called as assets. Then liabilities. So, what is a liability? It includes all expenses like the accrued expenses, payables and other liabilities for the mutual fund scheme. Then comes net assets. What is a net asset? It is the total assets minus the liabilities. And the final thing which we have to understand is the valuation date. Valuation date is the date on which NAV is calculated. 
So these are some important terms which we should be aware of before we go to solving of problems. In the next video, we will be doing problems related to mutual funds, its calculation of NAV, uh, the load which is associated with the purchase or sale of in, uh, the mutual funds, uh, different ways in which the problems can come up. So all that what we are going to do is in the next video lecture. Please keep watching the video lectures and sharing them. We would like to know the feedback also from you. You can post it as a comment below to this video. Thank you for watching. Namaste.